Hey guys, Layla here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial of sorts and I've gotten a lot of questions regarding how I draw my faces. So I figured we'd go ahead, open my sketchbook and we can focus on that very thing. So the thing about faces is there's a ton of ways to do faces. But basically, I'm just gonna show you how I do my faces. I have an anime-ish mixed with slight realism, if that. I say slight realism because I tend to draw my noses kind of the human way, so yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I think that's the only thing that really makes my art slightly realistic. But as far as noses go, I'm just not a real huge fan of the uh, anime type triangle nose, but I 100% believe that my style is very much anime inspired. And you know what? I ain't got no shame in that. <laughs> Cause I know some people are just like, anime is not real art. Like what? Okay, so anyways, so I did a circle as my base, which is pretty standard for faces. And then I do my middle line and I drag it down. I want to say about eh, maybe a third below the circle. <laughs> And then I do a line across, and these are guidelines. Sometimes I eyeball when I start sketching. Sometimes I'll use guidelines, depending on how much of a perfect sketch I'm looking for. And then I go ahead and I start the curve of the jaw down here, and I know where to go because I have the end of my line being the end of my chin. So I draw my curve, connect it to the end of the line of the middle, and then I do the same on the other side. And this is the base of my entire face at the moment. And so then I might do little indentations just so I get an idea of where the bridge of my nose is gonna go. Cause I know my nose is going to be here on this middle line, of course. And then I just start filling in certain areas. So I know my eyes are gonna be about here. One thing you can do is you can draw a circle for the eye, like how big the eye is going to be. And then you can draw like the lids upper lid right here. I don't usually follow that. I just go right into it because after a while of drawing, you kind of get the gist of your proportions and where things should be. And then my other lower lash line on this side, and it's almost never 100% accurate, such is life as far as eyes go. And so I'm drawing more guidelines so that I know where my mouth will be. And then another one here in the inner eye so that I know where my nose will be. And since the bridge of my nose is right here, I already made those indentations. I'm gonna go ahead and do her eyebrows. And then I'm drawing the circle of the iris right here. And then I shape her nose. So since I made these guidelines, I know that the outer nostrils are gonna fit around this area. And then her nostril comes in this little curve and then it goes down. And then you repeat the same process on the other side, a little inner curve that goes down. And then sometimes I erase my guidelines because sometimes they get a little overwhelming. So with these guidelines that I made in the middle of her eyes, I'm gonna do two little dots and that's where I know her lips are gonna be. And there we are. And then I just start taking out some guidelines so that they're not too distracting. <laughs> and then I usually have ears around the same height of the eyes, so kind of like where the eyelash is, this eyelash right here, and then I form the ears. And then the same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give her some simple bangs, simple hairstyle. And so I know bangs sometimes, depending on how you like them, go just above the eyebrows. It's a pretty simple hairstyle and I use it a lot. And sometimes I like the sides to come down kind of like that. And then I do the top, just following that same curve of the circle of the head. And make sure you kind of got this little dip going on for that natural part. And then I draw her neck. And one thing is, is you could think about this as a breaking down of shapes. So necks are sometimes pretty much just cylindrical, if you think about it, a tube in, in, in a way. So if I have a tube, you know, something like that. <laughs> And then you can think of shoulders as like a box, or really, you know what it is? You can think of the chest 
area as like a box and the shoulders just coming out curved on the sides and make sure everything sort of connects fluidly. So you don't want to leave your neck looking too much like a cylinder since we're organic creatures. And then you can just fill in detail. And this is just my favorite stage of just filling in all these little details and stuff because it really brings your character to life. And so I like doing these dark pupils and then I do shading in the eye. And these cola erase pencils, I absolutely love because they work so well with markers, especially like this reddish color can really play into the skin tone of your character when you color it in. Whereas pencil will smudge when you use markers. And plus these color pencils are erasable, so I love that. <laughs> and as you know, I'm not a fan of flat hair, so I'm gonna give this hair just a little bit more personality. And definitely just don't be afraid to have fun and try Try new things, especially if you're just practicing. I feel like artists can be really hard on themselves trying to achieve perfection. And one of the biggest things about learning and growing as an artist is to just let go of that idea of trying to be perfect. Otherwise, you just get stuck because you won't ever think anything is ever good enough. And then I'm going to add a bow up top because that's what I like. <laughs> and then a simple shirt, maybe just a halter top. And then I add collarbones for just a touch more of realism. And that's that. Maybe I might do a little bit of shading here and there. But for the most part, I would call this done. And I would probably ink it. Or I just might just take some markers and just color it and then ink it. Just depends on how I'm feeling, All right? And now I'm gonna go ahead and do a dude. And basically we're working with the exact same sort of structure with guidelines and the circle as our base. And the only big difference, well, I wouldn't say only, but one of the big differences for a dude is when you're doing the cheeks, Generally, not all humans are made the same, but for a dude, generally his jaw is going to be more structured, more rugged, more sharp, if you will. And so I made the chin just more defined and the cheeks. And then we've got our middle line, bridge of nose points. And then I'm gonna jump right into the eyes, which will be sharper this time. This is just generally how I like to do my dudes. I generally like a sharper, slender kind of eye. Makes the dude look more brooding, you know what I mean? And then of course you can draw a circle for the eye if you need more of a guideline. And I really hate drawing the second eye because I never get it to match. Ah. Oh. This is generally pretty okay. And then guidelines for my nose, and then guidelines for my mouth, dot here, dot there. Dude kind of looks a little sinister with this smile, but it works. Gives him a creepy personality. And then I'm gonna erase some of my guidelines because they're kind of tripping me up as far as looks go. He looked like he had a bit of a weird stout nose, which wasn't exactly the look I was going for with him. But I am gonna put a bit of a crook in his nose, like so. Maybe he got beat up boxing, I don't know. <laughs> Then I kind of want to do some thick, bold eyebrows because I tend to generally like really bold eyebrows on dudes. Just maybe I'll give him a bit of an expression. That's the other thing. Once you get used to drawing faces, do different things. Learn how to do expressions. I mean, this and this is like a minor expression. Like this is just an eyebrow expression and that's pretty much it. But there's so much more you can do. You can mess with the mouth, mess with the nose, scrunch it up, have him stick his tongue out, things like that. And I'm doing these little lines here, like tired brow lines. Cause he looks like he's scrunching up his eyebrows. And then I like to define the cheekbone area, like, with dimples, sort of. I think that's the cheekbone. I mean, the cheekbone is like up here, but this is like the hollow points. I don't know, makes the person look older. And then I tend to match up the necklines with these little dimple things. And then the hair, which I do struggle with in dudes. Hairstyles on dudes can be a little more trickier. So I'm doing like a basic hairline. Oh, his ears. And I made the ear a little bit more pronounced, more jagged. That's just a personal choice of mine. Just how I like to do ears on guys. <laughs> okay, hair. 
So I'm going to do a modern haircut. And one thing about drawing things that you're not comfortable with, always look at references. I literally just pulled up some male hairstyles on Pinterest because as far as drawing it from memory, I, I just don't know all the time. I mean, but when it comes to drawing hair, I try to just draw the form of it first, not too focused on drawing like individual strands or anything like that. Just trying to get the idea of what I want as far as overall look goes. And so when I have something I like, I go in and can do the individual details. And then I'm just gonna put them in a simple t-shirt. And then one thing I like to do is kind of do the shading around where the Adam's apple would be. And that's it. So we've got our girl here our guy here. And basically at this stage, I would go ahead and I would ink it probably with a multi-liner or a micron and color marker it in. I might just go ahead and do that. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that really quick. And that's that. So I have my two different characters, two different faces, two different genders, and that completes the tutorial. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, maybe comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.